back to Clip It Real Talk. My guest today is Marcia Williams. She is a multi-platform artist. She does makeup and hair. She also works at QVC. And she, to me, was one of the first African-American makeup products that is all from minerals. And I met her around 11 years ago. And here we go, Marcia. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, hello. Thank you for having me, Juanita. So um, I am a hair and makeup artist. I got licensed just about 20 years, 22 years ago. I graduated from Gordon Phillips Beauty School. Mm -hmm. And as I was graduating from beauty school, obviously I didn't go right into hair full force or makeup full force at all. Um, I always had a knack for it. My grandmother was a hairdresser, but you know, graduating from, you know, school, high school, my mom was like, you are not doing hair. You're going to go to college. And her brother was basically the professor at Spelman College. He still is a professor there. Okay. So that's where they were like, you're, that's where you're going. And I'm like, no, I don't, I want to do hair. That's like what I, my passion, that's what I wanted to do. But they just were dead set, or she was just dead set against it. My mother, this is a crazy part, my mother came to me one day and was like, oh my God, I ran I ran into the King of Prussia mom, there's this salon, um, there's this African-American girl or whatever that's, mm-hmm. you know, the manager, and she just opened the salon, it's multicultural, you should go check it out, it's, you know, she's telling me this, and I'm like, this is the woman that did not want me to do <laughs> hair, but she's telling me about this new salon that's opening up, so I went. I checked it out. I met with Maisha at the time. She was the manager. She's from West Philly and she just opened this salon. She was managing it. Okay. So I went, I interviewed with her and she's like, if you're going to do this, then you're going to do this. It's not like part time. Right. Need to do it. So two weeks later, I gave my two weeks notice at AstraZeneca Pharmaceuticals because I worked there for several years. I gave them my two weeks notice. I had. I can't even tell you the benefits. The money was great. 22 years right. ago, I was killing it. Right. I was killing it. They were paying for me to go to college. Like, I had already had my hair. I had already graduated from hair school. This has been years. And then here I am, you know, getting paid, traveling the world, and making dough in pharmacy, pharmacy or whatever, you know? And so my and mom you walked away from me it. about the salon. She's like, oh, my gosh, you got to check the salon out. So I go. I interview. Maisha's like, you need to, you're going to either do it or you're not going to do it. Right. So I quit. My mom thought I was crazy. She was like, I was telling you about the salon, not for you to like go and work there. Like, what are you doing? (laughs) So I quit. And I just never looked back. I worked at Mac for two years. Probably like just, you know, on the weekend. So I'm still Mm -hmm. doing hair, but Mac was just like my weekend fun. That was like the thing that I did you know, to keep my, get my makeup artistry going, you know, and that was really cool. I wanted to bring something to the marketplace that I knew, you know, a lot of my clients would love Mm -hmm. and that I could integrate along with hair, you know what I mean? And I have such a love for makeup and actually makeup is really my passion. Hair was just, you know, a bonus for me, you know, like I can do that. It got you into, actually got you into what you loved. Yeah, but it's it like crazy a play. because the whole time, like when I was working at Bubbles and then I worked at Mac on the weekends, I loved it, but I didn't, I think the hair was just not out of my system. So I just needed to really get that out of my system. And and at the time, makeup was extremely, you know, competitive. You know, mm-hmm. you really, and it's, I still feel the same way. It's still competitive. You really okay. have to, it's a lot of work and it's more work than hair could ever be, but it is truly my passion. So I'm glad that I, you know, started to formulate and understand wow. science that's, behind, you know, the makeup, you know what that's, I mean? That's a, I mean, that's a, a statement that as a, as a hairstylist, I would have never thought what you just said, yeah. Yeah. where you said makeup is a lot more work and harder. It's, it's so much harder. It's, it's an art. It's, I mean, and when I say it's an art, and I mean it's on so many levels, not just the art aspect of it, because if you have that artist, you know, 
nature, then it, it comes to you it, over time, mm -hmm. you know, but the career and the business itself is extremely like saturated, but it's mm. extremely competitive and you really have to prove a point like, because otherwise nobody really is going to want you to do their makeup. You know what I mean? Like it's really that, you know, competitive. Wow. And to build a kit is like, if I could tell you my kit was over 10 grand, literally, I mean, you have to be on the cutting edge of products. So even that is in and of itself is just so much more than, than hair could ever be. Wow. You know? And, I, and I, I think maybe that might have had a lot to do with why I didn't do it right when I, you know, first started with it. Cause Mac was like, everything you know what right. i mean especially at that time it, it was everything you know right. and so i just you know I, I wanted to make sure the hair was out of my system i was okay. i had a strong book i was making like three grand a week i right. was like doing well like you know what i mean mm -hmm. so it, i wanted to make sure that, that was out of my system you know okay so when you say that hair was so hair is out of your system you just maintain a certain amount of clientele to this day in regards to your um just your clientele that don't probably want to leave you but makeup is your love now when when did you actually launch embellish what year so my daughter was maybe two so i launched it in um 2010 2010 oh wait yeah no two that i would say 2009 i launched it okay yeah so i had launched it and I was like, you know, formulating, making my own products, right. um, putting it in jars, like doing all the label. And that's really yeah. hard. And if I can say this about you, I mean, I came to your launch and I came to your uh, launch for um, Embellish and it was very nice. And um, I actually came to you because I was going to try to get you to work for Cash Me <laughs> Oh, you never told me that. You was like, oh, did I know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but you had your own vision, which is fine. And um, but we 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 met, and that was a connection that was the for start. me. Yeah, exactly. yeah. And, but what yeah. I have to say in regards to even you, I I still have some of your um, empty containers here. Um, yeah. That eleven years ago, you had, and you still do have a vision, and in regards to your makeup line, and you were like one of the first. Because yeah. social media wasn't really popping like that back thing, then. Yeah. Um, and you already was starting and you had a makeup line for years. Yeah. Um, and now you're just trying to re or now you're just trying to reformulate it or so now so what happened was um I started the I, when I started formulating the line, I got a purchase order to go into Weaver's Way, which is a co-op in Chestnut Hill. Okay. So I, you know, was filling orders. I had a little launch there. People were buying the product. And then my dad died. Just up and died out of nowhere. And it was the most tragic thing that I could have ever gone through because he is my best friend. He's my favorite person. I'm sure I you was there with you if you didn't know it or not. I was there yeah. the whole time. You should probably see some of my posts and stuff like yeah, he was my absolute favorite person. So when that happened, it really just shifted me in such a way that I like fell into depression. I just really wasn't, and I had just gotten, I had maybe like a, a, right before that, I had gotten a job at QVC. So it was a lot of, you know, middle of the night shifts and, you know, early morning shifts and just like maintaining my bridal business. I really just couldn't, I didn't have the energy within myself to feel or fulfill all the orders that was coming my way. So I had to back off from it. Okay. So to say all of that, I, you know, re, you know, wanted to reinvent myself. And I said, you know what, instead of me doing an entire line, it was just way too much. Mm -hmm. Let's just pick one product that you absolutely love that people know you for. And people know me because my bold lip, when I go places, I might not have much makeup on, but I'll have my lips on. Right. A bold lipstick. So I said, all right, I'm going to launch lipsticks. Okay. So I launched and formulated lipsticks. And so that has been my signature thing. And I just, you know, kept that. And that's, that's basically what I've been doing. Just the lipsticks for right now. Okay. Okay. Um, have you, um, because you have been basically 
not in a salon for 10 years or so, but do you still maybe in a sense seeing a shift in the industry in regards to business wise, in regards to integrity wise, in regards oh, yeah. to oh, just mm-hmm. just the beauty industry yeah. um as a whole. Yes. Um so what do you think? Do you think so for me um there is, has been a shift and i think that the shift has happened you know probably around the time when i launched the lipsticks because you know i would before that i mean not the lipsticks the actual line but before that people were like like i was running i think i was managing the salon in brenmar and i think one of the biggest issues for me was the turnover rate in the beauty industry there were mm-hmm. so many people that will say oh i'm down for this but they really aren't you know what i mean they really want to chime in or do something on their own, you know what I mean? And that's fine to want to do something on your own, but if you haven't been groomed in the industry where you're sitting under leadership and you're learning, then I don't understand how, you know, but it's so many of that, it's so much of that. So many people are just trying to just wing it and that's just, uh, or I don't know if this is so much, I think that, you know, we have so much YouTube, there's so many things that you can do to, to figure it out. but there is nothing, I mean, that you can take away from the experience of learning under the right leadership and being groomed in this industry. It can take you so far. It's funny you said that. Um, I think that's a dead dinosaur right now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like you said over 10 years ago or so when you launched your whole line. Um, and me still being um, a salon owner found it so hard, you know, to... Um, mentor yeah um so they don't want to sit under you for whatever reason and you have so much to offer to them but it's like why wouldn't you want to sit under that like i don't get it well but they're not they're not made the way we we how we grew up and how we were were made you know what i mean and it's really that's a tough thing i think i realized that when i was managing and i realized that okay, there are certain people that wanted my leadership, but then there were mm-hmm. certain people that needed to be babysat. And, you know, that is, is it can be tricky. So, you know, I realized then, because my whole life I always wanted to have a salon. And okay. people would always say to me, oh my God, like, you know, because that was like the end all be all. You have a salon, you'd have made it. You know what I mean? <laughs> then I had to like say, okay, there's got to be something more than just that because I don't want to have a salon anymore because of my experience as a manager. I, I just, I just <laughs> don't, you know, and, and for me to launch something so, or birth something, because that's what it is. You're birthing. It's your right. baby. You're birthing it. Am I going to leave some stylist, you know, while I'm at home and they're working at my space? Am I going to trust that? I don't think, I don't think so. You right. know what I mean? Right. Now, because of what you just said, did you find yourself, I mean, you're in a totally different arena than a lot of us, um, far as you actually took, you know, your career to another level, uh, working for QVC and so on and so forth. Do you feel like you have the support that you need in regards to your vision? Now, I want to, I want to, I know that's a hard question. That's a really, really loaded question. Because are you speaking of support in like personal, like my. No, I'm not. Talking about support as a stylist. Support as a professional in the beauty industry. Do you feel, I see you already shaking your head. That's a, that's a tricky one right there. Let me tell you something. Let's keep it real, man. This is real talk. I'm telling you. That's a hard one. I want to really tell me, Marcia. So the really, the reality is it, is it the fact that you're African-American or is it because you work for QVC? So if, do you believe that any event, it was on another, blah, 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 that your makeup line would have launched, somebody would have picked it up, took it to to the next level or do you th- like even in our society? Let's so let just me just say this. Let me just say like this. you said, it's a loaded question. I want you to answer yeah. the whole load. So it's a loaded question. So for me, I have so much that I'm thinking about doing, right? Right. And I know that if I were 
were to have it's things it's all about connections and connecting with the right people right but my peers no there's no support there okay. because why would they support me right you know what i mean <laughs> why black, not though black white or indifferent you know especially you know in 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 a tv situation you know working you know in that space people aren't my peers aren't you know supportive in what it is that i'm trying to do at all and i think the beauty industry is a very cutthroat but you have to find the right people and that sometimes takes time you know what i mean well how much time because it's been <laughs> <laughs> I, know, right? I know because it's like everybody's trying to get in, and people think oh god i'm trying to get here i don't want to share like and i don't mind, i don't know i don't get that right yeah. So okay. It's a very, yeah, it's, uh, so I try to keep certain things off limits when I'm around my peers, because I know that they're not going to be supportive of it at all. You know what I mean? Like the fact that I have a, a brand and I'm going to turn, I had a brand before I started at QVC. Yep, you did. But, you know, to, to have them know that, like I had to really block all the girls that I work with because I didn't want them looking at my stuff. I know the hate that they speak out of their mouth, I, you know, towards other people, other peers. So I'm very particular. And it's a shame that it has to be that way, but it is. Well, it's, I'm going to tell you something. I, I This conversation is, seems like the same conversation with different people, unfortunately, but it's the same conversation amongst people that's in the beauty industry. It doesn't matter if it's hair. It doesn't matter if it's makeup. That's why I wanted somebody different on the show that's doing something totally different and yeah. it's the same thing the so same thing. i don't know if i ever felt that i don't know i don't know if i ever thought like it was you know because i'm i'm sure it has a lot to do with it you know that i'm african-american but i never took it as i guess for me like i, I try to focus in on the positive the positive aspect of it and I always I always knew stepping into like you know certain spaces I always knew how cutthroat and how a situation could be I mean the beauty in the salon is the worst place to be because people aren't really going to be supportive even when I was and you've always put yourself in a different environment anyway yeah, because so, I mean, I sex fifth and all of those places yeah, that you I worked at was very diverse was, you talk about segregated <laughs> sex fifth <laughs> avenue was the most segregated salon that i've ever worked in and i and bubbles was very diverse and i mean sax was diverse but it was segregated at the same time if that makes sense it does it was, it was a weird weird vibe and i just never you felt left know. out I, I understood when i walked into it what it was right it but is. you put yourself in those positions to to take yourself to another level because you had a certain uh amount of integrity that was going to take you to where you're going to end up at which yeah. went, which where you want to be is in film you yeah, want to yeah, be behind exactly. the scene doing makeup for these big time movies and stuff yeah. like that correct so you had to put yourself and no matter how it seemed that you put yourself no matter how long it took you 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 put yourself in a, a different environment than a lot of African Americans because you wanted a different mindset. Yeah, yeah. You had a different mindset. Yeah, I just have a different mindset. So I think right. when I work, you know, even at QVC, it's just like you you just kind of know walking into the room what it, what the room is because you mm -hmm. can feel the energy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and so I just had to okay, you know what your the purpose is why you're here. And it mm -hmm. doesn't matter about anyone else, you know what I mean? Right. And then the only person that you're competing against is yourself. Right. At the end of the day. So you have to be mm -hmm. the best at whatever it is that you do and improving yourself. Right. And I do feel like, you know, there were so many challenges even working, you know, or I mean, I'm not there now only because of the COVID, but there was just certain challenges that, you know, I could be overlooked. And it was like, I'm the only black girl here, but I could be overlooked because for what? I don't know because I felt as though my skill set was just as strong as anybody else's. Due to the fact that you mentioned the COVID, the, um, this pandemic child, how has it affected you in your life? Well, so the pandemic, 
I'm not gonna lie. I'm sad. You know, I really. <laughs> I'm sad, you know, but, there, but, you know, there's been a lot of times that I've Sorry, said, you said. I know, lead, leading up to what I've said, you know, it's time for me to, to shift. And I've been saying that for months. Yeah. Like, it was time for me to be out of, you know, the space that I was in at QVC. Mm-hmm. I've been saying that for months. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's been almost a year I've been saying this, right? Wow. And this happens. So you should be and happy. I, and, I, and I'm happy in that sense. But I miss doing makeup, like, you know, for my clients, you know what I mean? I miss, you know, all my brides. I miss all the stuff that I was doing outside. Like, I was doing a lot of film, doing a lot of, um, you know, commercial stuff. I can't, I can't do any of that. And I think that this pandemic has really changed. It's changed our industry forever. Let me ask you a question. Uh, what do you think about the government? Ooh. All of a sudden, all of a sudden. We wasn't mentioned a whole month or six, seven weeks out. Now all of a sudden, you hairstylists, you barbers, you massage therapists, you tattoo, you go back to work. Go back to work. Like what in the dictation? Yeah. How dare you? How yeah. dare them try to put us on the front line? Yeah. How are we supposed well, it's to? Essential, it's not an essential thing. We can't go back to work. We would. We can't be put in that situation. You know. We would not. I mean. And I feel sorry. I honestly feel sorry for the governor. Or I mean, not the governor. The I feel sorry for the people at in Georgia because of the governor's, you know, his request for them to all they can all go back to work. And I'm like, you have to be a fool to even. Listen to that. I they're not going back. That. I know too many people in Atlanta. So they're I'm just praying. You yeah. know, I've seen Jamal Bryant. Like I've seen him because you know I, we are we attend his church online. So I've seen him, you know, do a public announcement, just begging and pleading. You know that this does not happen. I just pray that right. our people, you know, our beauty people, do not, you know, because I've, I've I've run across some people that have been desperate. They want they need their money. They need their money. I, and I get it, but it's not worth your life. But some people, unfortunately, don't see it that way. And yeah, or they, or maybe, because you know what, I, and I have to look at it this way, because I'm like, if my husband wasn't here, and I had my three kids, my 22-year-old is out of the house, but I'm like, and I had to feed my two kids, I don't know. Would I, would I you know, push the envelope a little bit and say, you know what, I'm going to wear a mask, but I'm going to go and do some hair. Like, I don't know. I really don't know. I can say subconsciously, I think I may not do it, but I don't know. It has definitely changed our industry forever. Forever, we're done forever. I mean, I don't know how I would go back. So, you know, I I love being in the company of people. I love being people's faces. I love, you know, the art of it all, but I just don't know how that would translate. In, within the next few months. I don't know how that would work. So I consider myself done in that aspect for now wow. until wow. they can come up with wow. something something that's going to keep us and guarantee that we're not going to die doing it. Cause I, I, you know. <laughs> Wait. I got to think about my 8 and then 11, 10 year old. You know what I mean? Almost 11 year old. I don't want them to be without their mom because I don't got, you know what I mean? Yes. So then I think this is the most, I think this COVID thing has been, it's sad, but it's also been the most profound moment. You know what I mean? Like I really, really have, you know, spent some time just getting to know, you know, different aspects of what it is that I want to do next, you know, uh, what's the next phase for me and just thinking about my kids more. And, you know, one of the things I will wake up and I remember my kids would say to me every, I mean, every day, are you going to be home when we wake up? Are you going to be home when we come home from school? That would be the going question because I was traveling so much and mm-hmm. now I'm here and I'm present with them. So, and not mm-hmm. to say that I wasn't because I would carve out time, right. but it's different carving out time than actually being and able to just do and be with them all the time. That is amazing. Right. right. So right. I just have to take that into consideration like this. Yeah. That is loaded right there. You know what I mean? The fact that I'm, thankful enough to be able to do those things with them wow and i'm not a teacher but if somehow i'm homeschooling my eight-year-old 
<laughs> which is tragic because I'm the worst teacher ever. He can't stand how I call for backup. He hates that. I call my husband when he don't act right. Like all of these things, but I'm like, I get to spend time with my eight year old. He, yeah. you know, he that's so cool. You know what I mean? That's awesome. So, so this this pandemic, it has good good sides and it has bad yeah. sides to it. So, you know, where do we go from here? And we just gotta we gotta, we gotta reinvent, reinvent something new, something different. You know, and I think that that's I think that. You know, this whole social media thing, when it ha- when it did happen, when it started to catch on fire, because it did, it did. It was critical for us to hop on as much as we can, to be innovative as much as we can because of this situation now. You know what I mean? It's never too late. It's never too late, but now is the time to reinvent and just really, you know, figure out, okay, what's the next move? Because just in case we can't go back, you know? I believe that every guest that I have on Clip It, you guys will probably end up coming back because there's so much to cover in the beauty. Oh gosh, yeah. So much to cover. So many, so many different aspects, so many different experiences, so many different everything that I know Uh that the majority of my guests will return or have to return. Yeah. Um, But I really thank you for your time. Miss Williams, thank you so much. You're welcome, and I'm Mm -hmm. so glad for this reconnection. I know you gotta stay connected. I will. I will. We are connected now. Yes, we are.